Hello, everybody. Welcome to We Like Dota League 2024. It's week six of our group stage. We've got a diadem matchup for you between putting the R in RD2L and the Mongrels. We are already oh, into the draft. I snuck into this lobby right as they were about to start. Got there just in time. Ten so, seconds remaining. Putting the R in RD too well, as you just saw from our standings, uh, already seconds remaining. Uh, pretty firmly cemented at the top of the Dynam division. They are the team to beat. Uh, this is a good Dyna time for the Mongrels back. to figure out their strategies, to play against them, test things out, uh, get ready for the Radiant playoffs, which will start back. after this week of group stages. Uh, probably with another week break in there. Make sure everybody's ready to go. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, this is. Five seconds. I think so remaining. far. I mean, it's close between Mongrels and Yuki. I think so far Mongrels have been a little bit favored, as far as who I'd say, uh, stands the best chance of being able Radiant to take down. Pick. Uh, pick. Pudding. Dragon Knight. So this should be a good matchup for them. Team Pudding, they're going to start things off with a Dragon Knight. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Good old staple of the patch. Cannot go wrong with a first pick Dragon Knight. Let's see, what did we get for bands? I was... Rushing to get things started for us. Viper, Radiant Shadow Demon, Team Vengeful Back. Spirit, Banned Out by R and RD2L. The then Huskar Mars AA Hoodwink bans for Mongrels, and they're going to open with an Undying. So, right off the bat, a guy who's gonna say, Hey, stop, steal uh, stop being a strength hero. I'm taking Ten all of your strength. Remaining. It's mine now. Five seconds. Pretty decent remaining. answer to the Dragon Knight. Should. Uh, set themselves up for a nice lane. Uh, typically played as position 5 right now is where we expect to see this undying. Radiant Team Ban. Right, into our next set of bands, Winter Wyvern taken out by RD2L. And Mongrels hit, have played that once so far this season. Yeah, the Ventral Spirit is solid band. That's been their most picked hero for the Mongrels so far. Ten seconds Four out of five remaining. wins with it as well. So, then, and a big five one for them. Would not be surprised remaining. if they do not get to see much of the Ventral Spirit for the rest of this league. Dire Team Ban. Axe going to be the other ban. Mongrels. Oh, this is a little bit of a block pick Undying. I like it, because uh, Pudding has played the Undying three times. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire uh... team pick. Dazzle, the final of the bands alongside the Hoodwink for Mongrels. A lot of save here. I mean, well, I guess a couple save heroes banned out. Wyvern as well. Sometimes the save is less Ten of a save. Seconds remaining. Um, Dazzle ban may be Five brought on by remaining. seeing the Axe ban. Because Dazzle isn't actually a hero. Or wait, have... Yeah, no, neither of these teams have played the Dazzle yet. Radiant We've still been seeing it in core roles, even, if, even after it got pretty big nerfs after TI. The Mongrels go for the Pudge. This is a lot of beefy heroes kicking things off here. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Couple picks to come now for Team Pudding. See what they want to pair with this Dragon Knight. 
they're gonna put the DK in a C in a side lane, then probably find a nice range support to sit behind it. They've gone to the Witch Doctor, the Phoenix, um, in the past in that kind of route, maybe a Lich. Can see the Lion. Haven't been seeing as much of it after 735. C gave it some nerves. Radiant team pick. Still pretty solid here. Ooh, they're gonna go for the Snapfire. Does get left on the deck as the answer for the Undying's Tombstone. But it's... I like the Pudge pick as a bit of a preempt for the Snapfire because it's Ten going to remaining. be a lot harder to safely get off of Mortimer's Kisses when there's the Five threat of the Pudge Hook. Remaining. The Snapfire does lane quite well with the Dragon Knight. Especially before he has Elder Dragon form to be able to just cookie him on top of people to, to get an initiation. Then that closes the distance to get the melee Dragon Tail in there. It's a pretty good one-two stun punch. Um, though it's looking Undying like it's team. likely going to be Undying in one lane, Pudge in the other. So neither of these going to be hard to bring down, or going to be easy to bring down. The Techies is a, a response to that that should give them some high damage options. Grimstroke going to come out for Mongrels. Looking to set up the double feast. The, you get double soul rips as well, but that's not, not quite as flashy. Neither of these here is an amazing Inkswell carrier, so I expect to see like a Slark picked up here. Um... Slark does enjoy playing into a Dragon Knight. Techies, not so much. So, interesting to see if they go that route. Uh, what else have Mongrels played that could go with this? I'm thinking, yeah, with the Grimstroke pick, this Pudge kind of has to be offlane or mid. Or carry, but I, uh, yeah, they could do, like, Undying in the offlane and lane Pudge and Grimstroke together if they wanted to do a carry Pudge. Because yeah, Slark is something they played. Ursa would also work. Maybe something new. Radiant you can do like a PA. It's not amazing right now. Ooh, they'll do a Life Stealer. That's pretty good. Uh, Grimstroke carry, uh, Inkswell carrier as well. Guy goes fast when he pops rage. And you just run in there, stun everybody around you. You have the potential to get a lot of heroes Ten seconds remaining. all in one place <laughs> with this Wonk Girls lineup. I doubt Five this is a plan, remaining. but you <laughs> you can do some silly things uh, with like Lifestealer infesting somebody and then Pudge eating that guy and then Pudge getting into the Undying Tombstone. Um, and then there's the Snapfire on the other side. So we'll see how much that strategy comes into play. Uh, you also, if you get the open wounds on Life Stealer, that's going to feel pretty good to throw into um, the Soul Bind. It'll like really slow Radiant those people down back. and make them both super vulnerable. Rays are going to be the answer to the Life Stealer. Still leaving this draft pretty open. Both Dragon Knight and Razor can really go into either, to go into any of the core roles. Um, and you have the possibility of the Snapfire being a core. So this is a super Ten flexible draft we're remaining. putting. Dire team ban. I do think Razor and Dragon Knight are a little samey as heroes. Like, they do different things, but they fill kind of similar roles of just being, like, this beefy guy that can hit buildings and is hard Ten to deal with and remaining. can kill people. Uh, like, Dragon Knight has more lockdown, but Razor has, Five like, the static link remaining. can be a little higher damage. And I feel like their timings can be similar, too. So I think that's a risk that Pudding is going to have, picking these two heroes. Dada they can also back. potentially be answered by similar heroes, though I think already seeing the Lifestealer, it feels safer to go this Razor. So I think the Razor feels pretty good into the Lifestealer. Odie Band out. So Mongrel's expecting that uh, Pudding is going to be putting these two core heroes into the side lanes. Five seconds Radiant Radiant team ban. Necrophos as well. That would be a, a ridiculously durable core lineup <laughs> if they went Necro DK Razor. 
I feel like that would be a similar thing of like they all of these cores just trying to do the same thing. I think Pudding is going to be looking for more like a spirit hero. I feel like they want a bit of a harder initiator because you've like Five Dragon Knight can be a blink remaining. initiator. Techies. Techies likes to jump in, but doesn't really want to be the first to jump in. Techies is a really good follow-up jump. Radiant uh, team. Tiny the other band. Yeah, this could be like a puck here. A puck would feel pretty good. I think. It's going to be hard to get their hands on with like the Pudge and Lifestealer. Like having something that can kite this Lifestealer around, I think, is going to be pretty important. Ten seconds. I, I suspect they're gonna go something like a spirit or a puck. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, Queen of Pain. They've played a couple times on pudding. That would be a pretty decent answer. It'd also be a bit of a Dyer block pick because I'd like to see him over here on this. It's, ooh, it's, a, it's an Ursa. So the Razor or Dragon. Excuse me. Razor Dragon Knight's going to be in a, uh, in the mid lane. Probably the Razor. Gives you another answer to Tombstone. This is going to be a really feels bad game for Ten Undying. Seconds remaining. Which, you know, to be expected when you first pick it. Five seconds remaining. Almost worry that they're putting too much into countering the Undying. I feel like Pudding's team is now fairly kiteable. But the Mongrels are not a mobile team either. These fights are going to be a lot of just like face into face brawls. <laughs> like all, all five of the cores we see so far just want to bash heads against each other. Hudge is going to be in the middle of everything. Lifestealer is going to be trying to like kind of duck in and out, but really just try to stick on somebody. This Grimstroke is going to be food for the Ursa, the way the Techies is going to be food for the Lifestealer. And there's a Leshrac for Mongrels, so kind of also a hero that just wants to sit in the middle of you. This will be more of the duck in and out. Super high damage. It's going to... Uh, it's going to make it harder for the cores on Pudding to really, like, stand where they want to stand, stay on top of everybody on Mongrels. I like this Leshrac. I think I think it makes Pudding's fights a lot harder. Um, I'm not well versed on these teams. Let me try to check quick where we think these heroes are going now that we see them locking in. Let's see. Okay, Claire's the mid laner, so it's gonna be mid Dragon Knight. Uh offlane razor. And then I don't think anything spicy here is happening for Mongrels, but I'll double check. Dossie's the safe lane. The rest of these players have different names in the team. Okay, we'll just see where they line up, but I expect this is pretty straightforward of an offlane pudge uh, mid a Shrek. Should be a fun one. Uh, gotta talk about hats quick. We'll also take a look at them once we get into game. A really good Ursa set. You've got the baby bear on the back. You've got the new shiny hat. I've never seen this techie set before. I think that must be... It's probably from the most recent Halloween set. Or maybe an older one. Good techie set. I like the owl a lot. Life stealer standard, but looks good at the the golden immortals. Smoke up from mongrels to start things out. Nothing on Ari for Prepare the snapfire, but there's only a handful of sets for her. I like the, the Snake's Razor. This is a good Razor set. I really like Claire's Dragon Knight. I think I think the last time I cast Pudding, I said the same thing. This is not a set I've commonly seen, and it looks really sick.
Hatch draft, though. Hmm, this Undying is pretty plain. That's more egregious than the plain Snapfire. They're all invisible right now, so we can't. I did not want to. There we go. Yeah, the Lushrax set's fine. Yeah, I think uh, Hatch Draft gonna go to Pudding. Thirty seconds to battle. As far as actual draft, kind of favoring Mongrels, I think. I think this last pick Lushrax is really scary. And I think, I think the way that these team fights should play out, the battle begins. The lash rack is gonna feel really good. The pudge is gonna feel really good. It's kind of gonna come down to how these lanes go, I think, because I think once one team has an advantage here, it's gonna be really hard for the other team to come back. How do we feel about how these lanes stack up? Pudge Grim versus... Like, it's going to be Ursa Techies. This mid lane should be pretty chill overall. I think it's a little easier for the Leshrac. I think this is also a problem with going... Dragon Knight and Razor, because as much as you flex it, I think they were happy picking Leshrac and Dominator in them for the mid lane. And then up top, Undying Life Stealer is generally a pretty scary lane. But you do have a you have two ranged heroes to deal with them. And you have the Razor static link. Yeah, the Rage doesn't do anything for you other than you faster, but Razor is generally pretty good at staying on top of heroes. So I kind of... I kind of think this lane is going to be under threat. As much as an Undying normally can crush a lane... I think I think I favor putting side lanes. But I expect this Leshrac lane to go pretty well. And so I think if Teamfight Andy makes some plays around the map early, that can really offset any struggles they have in the side lanes for Mongrels. Nice double decay. Yeah, Marquise, I feel like, has to play super, super safe here. Yeah, you get hit by a sticky bomb. Techies commits the blast off and Ursa gets on top of you. It's going to be hard to survive there. Andy getting some jungle farm while the wave is a little pushed in. Doesn't seem like they're getting really pushed out of the lane, just to the trying to scoop up some extra farm on the side. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Gonna miss a couple creeps here. Pop the plasma field goes out, but like with all of these tanky cores, like who is what hero is dying in any of these lanes? When the answer is none of them. We're three and a half minutes in, and there's barely been anybody falling below half health. You have the Snapfire laned against the Undying and already has the point in Little Shredder. This ability is not getting used until Tombstone is cast, which means Undying just doesn't get to cast Tombstone. Like, unless Ari commits it to try to get a kill on, like, Dossie with a static link going, 
there's just never an opportunity to use the zone of one. We got a bot. Looks like we just had a hook on buttery Greg. Blast off. Comes in. Um, Moth six string. So like I cannot parse that while the techies is moving around on my screen. <laughs> Big tasty, eating the right clicks from the techies. Spaceship under a little bit of threat. Ooh, he's gonna get hit by the plasma field here, and there's gonna be the static link. Oh, first blood happens down bot! I'm watching what I was certain was going to be first blood. The spaceship gets brought down by Mr. Fiche. Amidst the tombstone, they're gonna be able to just walk out from under the tower. Actual first blood was bought. That was Buttery Greg. Making sure that we keep to our WLDL traditions of not having the first blood occur on the stream screen. Um, yeah, looks like it was kind of what we expect. You get sticky bombed, you get blast offed, you get earth shock. No, look to go on to Big Tasty here. Quite a bit of damage from these Fury Sweeps. Nice timing. And the Ace Will gonna go for the hook into the Inkswell. Gets the stun, but has to keep walking away. Buttery Greg is falling pretty low. They get hit by the Blood Grenade, but Marques not gonna be able to chase onto this further. Oh, looks for the Stroke of Fate. Ink did connect, but not quite enough. Are you gonna make the rotation over to the mid lane? Gonna secure this double damage rune. No such thing. For Claire, actually ends up having to take himself. Throws out the little shredder and the scatter blast, and that is a nice rotation to a kill. Thanks to Ari, goes the way of Claire as well. The snapfire out of lane. Mr. Fisher did get brought uh, pretty low up here, but did manage to survive. Got a tombstone not quite up yet in the last usage. Blast off the Ink's history. Inkswell going on... Oh, that must have accidentally been on a creep that just died. That, that always feels bad. Play a good amount of Grimstroke and that has happened to me plenty of times. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Yeah, Claire proving me wrong about how this mid lane would go up in the lead in last hits, and I believe net worth as well. Absolutely. Okay, static link out on Dossie. Holding range for now. Cookie to keep the link going. Dossie just getting clicked down. One hit would do it, but able to walk away, no rage necessary. Spaceship now going to be the one in trouble. Does get the decay stacks, which will help out the big damage. Oh, the tower hit's coming out on Mr. Fishe. I see you trying to be careful. One hit would do it. Oh, reads it wrong. Just get over there, find the click, uses the rage. There it is. That gets Dossie to level six. These boots ready on Buttery Greg. Off six string, throwing up the sticky bomb. Turning off Big Dyer's Tasty's clarity. Is under attack. Top, looking to find something on Ari, but there's no stuns in this lane. So it's a free teleport back to base for Ari. Radiant Just leave Mr. Fisher alone Radiant in the lane here attack. for a bit, but it's a razor, so it does not mind that too, too much. Bot, big tasty, potentially looking for an angle for a hook. Moving pretty fast with phase boots of their own. Bust it. Six string, gonna sidestep the pudge a bit here. Bounty. 
pop, another static link comes out. Get too much in team fight, and he can make the rotation over here. Has the Pulse Nova going, sticking on top of Mr. Fisher, who did. Oh, Earth Split just doesn't connect. Oh, and the turn from Ari! The little shredder damage and the tower attack's gonna do it, so they end up trading Team Fight Andy. They do have the tombstone down in response to seeing the little shredder used, but they're gonna be able to click the tombstone down anyway. Let's drop right under the tower. One for one trade of your mid for your offlane, so perfectly fine for Mongrels. They even get a little more gold for it. Not quite how they wanted that one to go. It does open up Claire to get a good amount of damage on this tower. Spaceship can make the rotation over. You're a level 4 undying into a level 9 Dragon Knight. You gotta be a little bit careful here. Let's hit the level 5 and gets the Decay Stacks going. Okay, meanwhile, pinging out Dossie. Link gets broken right away, so be able to quickly walk that one up. Claire just doesn't care that Spaceship is here. It's just continuing to click on the tower. Marquise will arrive. You can fight Andy making the way over as well. It's an arcane rune in the bottle. Dragon it's gonna give them faster dragon form on the next use. Probably will save that for once that's off cooldown. Might even see them use that like immediately when it comes up because pretty happy just farming in dragon form. Four levels in Diabolic Edict means Teamfight Andy. Dish up damage, but Ari makes the rotation over. Has Mortimer's Kisses, Andy trying to do do dodge them. But <laughs> does not manage to. Don't know what happened to the word dodge in my mouth there. Remember the five Ds of Dyer's Dodge, Mortimer's Kisses. Uh, dodge, 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 and Dodge. Sticky Mom out on Big Tasty. Keep Claire pushed off the sleeve. This Dragon Knight's so big now. 6 to 2, 2k, now 3k net worth lead. For the side of pudding. This buttery Greg been quietly farming up the Battle Fury down here. Still a bit to go on it, but making pretty good pace. Dossie hanging out under the top tower. Wants to keep these heroes at bay. Wants to have this tower to work with for a while. Spaceship can make the walk over here. Try to pinch her around on Mr. Fishy. Ari, a little blocked off by the pit here. Now they're going to turn with the link into the cookie. Tombstone up on the high ground. Nice placement. The spaceship is already getting torn apart. And now Ari steps up with a little shredder that's going to find quick work on the tombstone as planned. And both six string showing up as well to help make sure there's no response. Big Tasty steps up, tries to find the hook, but gets blocked by the creep. Dossie does get in onto Mr. Fish A, and Teamfight Andy has showed up with a shield rune. To try to focus in on Ari. Dossie has to escape into the belly of the pudge. They finish off Ari, and their case denies the tower bot. Find the kill on Cloth Six String as well, and they go for the static link on Teamfight Andy. The spaceship is back up, and it's a double kill for Big Tasty. And a limp away on just enough health. It's a very nice sequence there from Mongols. They find. Well, it got split into two fight recaps. Claire and Buttery Greg here want to contest. Spaceship is going to get quickly torn apart. And Teamfight Andy low on mana, but high on move speed, going to be able to walk away from the Ursa. They already used the Earth Shock. In Pudding, they want to keep the pressure up in this top lane. We've got the full-on party lane going. The hook under the tower. Going to find Claire. This would be a big kill with the Mortimer's Kisses coming out into the blast off. Soulbind is there, though. So Dossi trying to come and clean this up. Finishes off Claire, but now getting torn into by Buttery Greg. Marquise can't do anything to keep the Ursa off of their life stealer. Is now Teamfight Andy in on the back lines. Racing into Ari. Buttery Greg just going to work on Marquise. Finishes off. Snapfire, the Grimstroke going to get brought down as well, so it's three dead on either side. And Pudding going to be pretty happy with that. Spaceship stepping over here now, though. Now here's Mr. Fishy with the static link. Tombstone going to get dropped. Tough position for Mr. Fishy to get into. Teamfight Andy, Yules up to survive. Damage still coming out. Hook not quite on the mark. 
Urs are gonna finish off the tombstone, but will trade themselves big tasty. Picks up the kill, and Mr. Fishy goes down to the burn damage from the Leshrac. So that is over the course of some respawns, a full team wipe of pudding, and everybody but spaceship. Spaceship might have died at the beginning there, too. I think they did. I think everybody died. I think literally all 10 players died in that extended team fight. That is bonkers. <laughs> Who came out on top? Uh, well, the net worth lead is smaller, so I'm going to say Mongrels. Claire back into the Dragon Swarm has the Mage Slayer finished. That's an important timing against Team Fight Andy here. Blair's gonna connect with Dragon Tail's there as well. Chains into the blast off. And Ari's there, the damage is just too much. Blair brings them down. Soulbind out onto two, but where's the follow-up? Spaceship still making their way over, gonna walk into a few techies mines, and ends up getting killed off by just the dragon's breath. Meanwhile, Mr. Fish a static link up on a big tasty. Hudge just wants to split away from this, but getting run down. The phase boots not enough to get away. One more click would do it. They'll finish it off with the plasma field. And now they chase forward again. The cookie on top of the grim stroke, and it's four dead on the side of mongrels. As pudding are the ones partying as they finish off this top tower. It is space for Dossi. It is, I think, uh, I think, from what I've heard, a bit of the, the motto for Team Mongrels is just give this guy space, trust in Dossi, and your carry will do the carry thing and get them through the game. So, does lead to the other tower being traded. Good amount of farm for this Maelstrom lifesteal here, going right into the Mjolnir. on the right part of the map. Spaceship getting some vision back up for them. Maintain control of this jungle where Mr. Fiche has been playing quite a bit. Got Aether Lens, the first target for the Grim Stroke. The Claire and Ari starting to rotate up into the jungle. Step under vision and Big Tasty reveals the Blink Dagger, jumps on top of Ari. Devour. Now trying to chase down. They have the Soulbind just for the slows, and that's going to be enough to find the kill for Teamfight Andy onto Ari. I don't know why I've called Dismember everything except Dismember so far in this cast. Completely blanking on that one. Ooh, nice hook for Big Tasty. On Boss Six String does set up a blast off. Meanwhile, Claire with the Dragon Tail on Team Fight Andy. It's brought very low and does not have a ton of damage due to the Mage Slayer. Big Tasty falling low as well. We're gonna turn with the Dismember on Buttery Greg. Put Andy already down, and now they turn towards Claire with the Infest Bomb from Dazi. You finish off Spaceship, and now the Life Stealer getting controlled up. Grimstroke at least finishes off the kill on Claire, but it's four dead again. Team fight's not going their way at all, and Mr. Fishy trying to finish off the team wipe. Our case will have just enough move speed to get away from the razor. Something's on the Buttery Greg Courier. This is a Blink Dagger for the Earth, for the Ursa. The Earth Shocker. Gold is a great con Don't worry, Morgan, or Mongrels looking to maintain control of this jungle again. Or still, Mr. Fisher has just owned this part of the map. Okay, he's gonna step up. Techie's mind's gonna make this a lot more troublesome. Spaceship brought down to half. And it's an Ursa lineup. So, team pudding, they're gonna be into the Roche pit here at 18 minutes. Dirty swipe stacks getting built up on Roshan. So it should go down pretty quickly. Mongrels, they're kind of playing in the area, but they're not going to be here in time to contest it. Looks like Andy has to be a little bit careful with the position here. Mr. Fishay 
I'm gonna spot that these creeps are aggro. They're gonna start running towards it. Claire's right there with the dragon tail onto the left track. Not a ton of mana to work with for Team Fight Danny. You get a nice tombstone and a hook to help save Inkswell as well for the moves to be more risk as it's raining in. Slowed up by the Soulbind, held in place, hit by the Earth Splitter, but they are going to deal with that tombstone. Buttery Greg right in on the back, but the Aegis is already used. The rest of the team not able to quite keep up with their Ursa. And now, putting they get the Aegis, but immediately spend it, they only get the kill on the Grimstroke. Pretty nice defense there, and ooh, both six string. Bound over on the back, trying to get some peaky vision, and Infight Andy picks up that kill. Now with Grimstroke respawning, see if Mongrels look to take a fight here. Bloodstone being worked on by the Leshrac. Not the mana item it used to be, but still gives you quite a bit of mana regen. That's just about all a Leshrac needs. Sanj and Yasha done on Mr. Fishe, working on the BKB next. Let's see, we've got Aghanim Scepter being worked on for Ursa. Already has the Earthshock. This guy is going to be really hard to bring down with the Shard and Scepter combo. Avis on Ari nearly to the Solar Crest. I think it's on the way out. In fact, it sure is. Mechanism done on Spaceship. Uh, just about there for the Bloodstone for Team Fight Andy. That's going to be a big timing. Mjolnir done on the Lifestealer. I'll just click this button. It's more fun going in and checking in on each one of them. Veil of Discord, Blink Dagger on Pudge. The uh, Vanguard as well. Which makes sense because there's... One nice thing for Mongrels is it's mostly right-click damage that you're worried about here. There's a lot of magic damage coming from the supports. The core is mostly physical. It makes your itemization a little easier. Nasi finished with the Yasha. Build that Assange to go with it. It looks like Mongrel is going to set their sights on their Tormentor. Plenty of heroes here, so it should be a pretty quick pickup. You'd love to get it on the Grimstroke. Take it on the Undying for the save as well, although with how... Yeah, it does go the Undying. With how much middle tower is under focus attack. putting put into this first pick Undying in their draft, it's really scary to try to save somebody with Tombstone. Get stunned for three seconds and Tombstone is brought down. It's big tasty. Blinking right into six string. With this member, but actually going to survive for now. Cookie helps them escape. Spaceship committing. Trying to chase forward, but Pudding wants none of it. And they're just gonna back themselves right up. Claire now is gonna get gone on by Dossie, so you have to split her. Now turning back towards Teamfight Andy, he uses us up to survive the kisses. That's controlled up to this member just after the Soulbind ends, and now Buttery Greg jumps into the middle of things on top of Big Tasty. Dossie trying to square off with Mr. F Fishay. The Razor does go down, and Buttery Greg getting kited a little bit. Finds the kill on Spaceship. Teamfight Andy, though, is going to finish off the Ursa. Now just two heroes left, and Claire already low. Teamfight Andy looking to chase for more. They have the mana. Dossie... Hardly any health to speak of, but they're looking to chase forward. It looks like now they will choose to back off. A very nice fight for Mongols. Is Claire going to pop the dragon for him? He wants the dragon here. Throws out the dragon tail. Now is he going to heal up? And then Inkswell quickly popped. Clear out those illusions. Manta style is done on the Dragon Knight. So should see the Aghanim Scepter next. Plus, Claire chooses to go Radiant back for the Blink Dagger for some more initiation Dyer's for the team. Has been this is such a tough game to look like. I feel like the Blink Daggers are pretty important across the board. He's getting like all so many of these heroes just want to like be in the middle of everything and ball. And I think that's how you see that fight go Mongrel's way playing from behind. And now. 
pretty much back to even. Because this Pudge and Leshrac, they, they are having more fun when all six cores are sitting on top of each other. They've got the big AoE damage. That... I mean, RD2L, they do have their fair share of AoE damage. You've, of course, got the Battle Fury as uh, Buttery Gray. Oh, no, is going to finish up that Aghanim Scepter. Thinking maybe he was diverting towards the uh, Batcher, but just one piece away from the eggs. Radiance yeah, you've got the Battle Fury, you've got the Plasma attack. Field. Uh, Eye of the Storm is not really AoE damage. And you've got... Uh, do you have the Splash Attacks already? Yeah, that's level 2. So it's not... It's not nothing for AoE damage, but it, it's no... Leshrac Core Pudge for AoE And you're still a ways away from this Ags for Big Tasty. That damage isn't insane. But the Shiva's Guard will be there soon, and that's going to amp up both the Rot and... Even more importantly, the Leshrac. Kind of just gets a free Shiva's Guard because Big Tasty is building it. Because they're going to be sitting on top of each other anyway. The Shiva's Guard feels, I think, extra valuable in this kind of compact fight brawl game. Team Fight Andy. Pressuring down the mid tower with the Diabolic Edict is going to see Mr. Fisher, I think, under the Watcher. Well, it says that's red, but this. I wish there was some way to know for sure. <laughs> I wish the animations on the Watchers just worked correctly. Buttery, buttery Greg, keeping an eye on the Roche Pit, but a little early to be there. One minute until the possibility of respawning. I think uh, internal clock for the Roche may be off a little bit because the Aegis did get used pretty quickly. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah, Aghanim Scepter finished. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. So Buttery Greg going to be a menace to try to kill in these next fights. If they get an Aegis on this guy as well. I don't know that Mongrels have any semblance of the damage needed to kill this Ursa twice. It's a relatively short Roshan, smile, uh, Roshan respawn timer. Well, got ahead of myself there. Um... So, under a minute. The Dragon Knight Illusions. Getting a solid amount of damage on this tower. I don't know how much was already on it, but brought down close to half. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So yeah, putting Dyer's they are just scan. playing around the Roche Pit and Mongrels are aware of it. They Scan won't find it, but they know that's probably where these guys are posted up. 10 seconds to the Roche spaceship. Maybe standing under the wards here. And Tasty and Dossy joining as well. Dossy gonna walk into a handful of mines, clears it out with the Enrage. Or just the Rage. What's Enrage? I think that was Ursa. It is an ability in this game. Ooh, the mine, Scossy. Be careful with the mine, but has another rage. We get the hook back out. Now Claire gonna focus in towards Big Tasty. Has the Shiva's Guard. That's gonna slow up Claire. In fight Andy. Also dishing out the damage to the back away. Split Earth used as well to help control the area. Now they're gonna go into Earth Pit. Solar Crest on Buttery Greg means. On top of this Dragon Knight's attacks, it has hit level 18 and has the Ag, so it's all of a sudden a level 4 Elder Dragon form. Grosh is going to go down quick. They have the Roar, so it's going to be a smoke from Mongrels, but they're not going to be able to get here before it goes down. Big Tasty, though, is going to jump in. They get the Soulbind, looking for something to link to. 
Axe reveal on Dossie as well. BKB helps him survive. Tombstone drop down in the middle. It's going to go down quick. Mr. Fisher playing out in front. Get the plasma field slow. Only on Teamfight Andy as Dossie had the rage going. Ordered just that fast. Looking for the static link. Dossie now back towards Mr. Fisher. They're going to tear apart the Razor pretty quick, and Claire in a troublesome spot. Tries to TP away, but already in the split earth, and Claire goes down as well. Ari right, just forced to TP out. Buttery Greg has the Aegis, but no chance to use it. As Mongrels, they find three kills. Eki's dying right at the top of that. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Only tier one tower, and it's now, despite that Roche being taken, it's slight lead for Mongrels as they have very well played around these Roshan timings of the Ursa lineup for pudding. Three Greg looking to contest the push here for Dossi. Buff six string back up in the area as well. Mongrels gonna take control of the Radiant Triangle. Clear out some of those creeps. Big Tasty. Getting the mid lane pushed in. To the impurities. About everybody up on the side of Pudding. Now, they didn't use their Aegis middle tower in that fight. Buttery Greg able to escape before dying even once. So with all of them back up, they do still have this Aegis timing to play with. Still holding the cheese on Ursa as well. Stroke working on the Halberd. I mean, this is... Dyer's middle tower is this is a tower. good game for a Halberd for Grimstroke. If you get double disarms going, the Soulbind is on two cores. That very much turns those heroes off. A push in. Teamfight Andy gonna get stunned up by the Dragon Tail under tower and Buttery Greg's in and Teamfight Andy already dead. All of R and RD2L playing Dyer's up around top this top tower. And they're going to push it down, and they're going to look for more of the hook. The blink back, more case. Arrows out. Abandons embrace, but does a good job stepping back as Buttery Greg blinks in. Meanwhile, Dossie. Going for the counter push. Fortifies, fortifies used both ways. Claire crashing on the tower. Buttery Greg jumping forward on his spaceship. Has the ult. Oh, as the hook splits up the soul bind. It's still going to be good control into Buttery Greg, who's going to lose the Aegis well behind the tower. Claire going to finish off the building. Dossie brought back as well. Now the Silence has the cheese, but do they have enough? There's so much slows. The ink swell for the stun. The infest as well means the Buttery Greg is disarmed and brought down. This Lifestealer Agonims is so devastating for all of the cores on RNRD2L. For whom it is so crucial to be able to attack. The fact that it disarms you and attacks you from the inside. It is. Is a very good Lifestealer Agonim Scepter game. The Mongrels, they lose the, the top tier 3 tower. But they get more than half damage on the bottom tower. And win the fight. Bringing down the Earth twice. And Ari gonna get found here. Slowed up by the Rot. Dossie. Packing in. And Spaceship gonna finish off that kill. Now two dead. Opportunity. <laughs> Blind hook from Big Tasty would have been Radiant's absolutely insane if that hit. There was vaguely Radiant's in the vicinity. Can drop down the Manta Illusions with the Dragon Form. Try to clear out this creep wave. The Gossip is going to go into the hook onto the real dragon. Looks for it to dismember but gets stunned up. Soulbind there for the slows. Silence jumps as well. Buyback from Snapfire but will be, in, will be in time. Boss Six String jumps in but there's not enough damage. It just goes down. Mortimer's Kiss is going to rain in, but it's only going to act to push most of the team away as Dossie does not care to start clicking down this middle tower. Spaceship standing behind them. To find the tower. Meanwhile, Mr. Fishe going to get spotted cutting this wave. Tasty, not going to quite connect with the Shivas. Nice dodge to blink. Uh, dodge of the blink as Mr. Fishe 
ducks into the trees and gets away. But all in all, Mongrels only get a tier 3 tower there. But pretty solid defense, does cost the Snapfire's buyback. Buttery Greg has finished up the Basher, looking at a Abyssal Blade. Fully build that out. Sight the Vice queued up by Razor, who has BKB, of course. Player, nothing queued up yet. On their side, Greaves for Techies. This Mongrel is taking control of the bottom lane. Still a decent amount of time before Roche respawning. Two minutes till the three minute variable timer starts. Mongrel's just taking control of the map, building out this lead that they have now firmly built, bigger than the lead Pudding had earlier. We're gonna get a smoke from putting the R and RD to well. You're gonna spot teamfight Andy D warding here. It's the rest of Mongrel's playing close enough. Now teamfight Andy moves towards the team. Claire though, starts the fight, blinks in. On Big Tasty with the Dragon Tail, Mr. Fiche right into the middle of everybody, maybe more than they expected. Pops the BKB and is latched onto Marques. The Infest saves Marques for now. Now the Soul Bind will link. Double Yules up to keep these two out of the fight for the moment. Split Earth going to control things up on the stairs. Spaceship getting brought low by the Mortimer's Kisses, but now the f chase is on. Teamfight Andy wants to finish off Mr. Fisher, but they get them out. Dragon Tail again from Claire. Just gonna back off now. Turns with Dragon's Breath. Big TC jumps in. Buttery Greg with the bash. Now the damage coming out. Cookie away, but the infest again inside the Ursa. No chance to attack, just has to walk away. Techies jumps in with a big blast off on two. Gossip getting brought pretty low, has to be careful, taking tower shots as well. Static Link, four staff away in the Soul Rip, able to save the Life Stealer. Claire out in front again, Teamfight Andy. A little low on mana for the moment, but the Split Earths. Just absolutely devastating on this high ground, as it ends up being, at the end of the day, just one support on each side. Buyback from Six String. A chaotic fight that both teams just kind of limp away from. That was a clutch save by Spaceship. The four staff into the Soul Rip. Would have been probably Dossie's death in a very different fight if the Life Stealer goes down there. Halbert is finished on the Grimstroke. There's enough happening in that fight that may have missed it last time. Ooh, gets the Inkswell Shard as well. The damage buff, the life steal, and the dispel. As putting the r and 2 l they're going to set up around the Dire Roach Pit once again. One minute until the respawn. This time they were checking right at the right time when there was the chance of it being up. They'll maintain control of this area with the Techies Mines. It's going to be a similar situation that we saw for the last rush. It'll be hard for the Mongrels to find a way... This Roche pit to contest. The fight, and at the end of the day, went pretty well for them last time. They're gonna smoke up here. All five. Radiance middle barracks are under attack. Meanwhile, creeps crashing into the barracks. Ooh, this could be trouble. This could be big trouble for putting the R and RD2L. Well. The call is to back, and back they do. This creep wave clashing is Pretty well timed for Mongrels. The Techies Mines are gonna pop. Oh, oh, just seconds away from the Roche respawn. The Mongrels choose to play around this still. Gonna get the D Ward here. So putting. They're well aware that Mongrels is playing around the Roche pit now. And they smoke up. Gonna break on Dossie. Where did my camera just go? There we go. <laughs> now, oh, this is gonna be a big chaotic one as well. Already on to both supports and Teamfight Andy! Stun up, but again the saves with the infest inside, and now the tombstone in the middle of everything. 
Both supports going down early and spaceship as well. Teamfight Annie though getting brought so low, Mr. Fisher and Claire controlled up, a buttery Greg goes down, and Dossie is just standing in the middle of all of them, bringing them down, Cookie to try to get Claire away, but the chase is on, the, dra the dragon tail stuns them up, and meanwhile on the other side, Big Tasty finds the dismember on Mr. Fisher and brings down the Razor. So three dead on either side. But two cores on uh, left standing for the mongrels. Only Radiance one core remains after the fight, putting the RNR to dwell. So nobody going to take the Roche here, as Radiance neither team has the heroes control. left to do it. Mongrels Dyer's just going to finish off that last tier 2 tower. Attack. Abyssal Blade finished on Life Stealer. It's Claire and Ari going to look to contend. Dossie just going to use the Rage TP away. We get the supports respawning. Mongrel's going to have the slightly earlier respawns here. A 14k net worth lead now for the Mongrels. So still Roche. Everybody's going to be back up, it looks like. Roshan has now gone to work down in the bot lane where he holds on to a refresher shard and a banner. Lost six string. It's gonna get spotted here with the mines from Dossie. We'll look for the blast off into the Rosh pit. You can find Andy showing up as well. Six string is just gonna be in big trouble and brought down. And that's gonna open up the Rosh for Mongrels. Pudding has controlled the Rosh pit so many times this game. But this time, it's the Mongrels. Dossie picks up everything except the thing they wanted. <laughs> Finally finds the Aegis. Passes the Refresher Shard over to Teamfight Andy. Um, and also going to drop off Banner. Now just going to leave the Refresher Shard on the ground. Give that over to... Okay, no. Andy will hold on to it. I feel like it doesn't do a ton on Electra. I guess you can get, like, double Diabolic Edict going. Dyer's that can be really scary. So attack. maybe that alone is worth it. I mean, the Split Earths Radiant's are always constantly attack. popping off as well. The Six String is respawning here. It's going to be a 5v5, but they have the Aegis. Dossie immediately going to rage up. Moves forward on Claire. Has to force out the BKB. Winter Trade playing in the area. Moonstone going to get used. Spaceship trying to keep it alive with the Soul Rips. Claire trying to bring it down. More Race Kisses. Pushing the Mongrels off. Soulbind in silence. Dossie explodes out of the Ursa. Trying to bring down Buttery Greg. The rest of the team trying to keep them alive. Dossie the one now forced to back away. Mr. Fisher gets a big plasma field onto three. Zora comes out and Buttery Greg in. Huge blast off from Boston String and they find the Aegis on Dossie already. The proper fight on the RNRD2L high ground. It goes disastrously for Mongrels. Has to infest into Buttery Greg again, but now it's just going to be sitting in the middle of all five heroes. Dossie the hook out. It's not quite going to be found. And it's a triple kill for Buttery Greg. Is putting answer back. A massive team fight cuts the net worth lead in half. Blanks the Aegis. It's four for nothing. They executed that perfectly. I think Mongrels a little split up. Some players diving in deeper, attack. others getting Dyer's pushed back. It was a really nice Mortimer's Kisses to split up the team there. And not a lot of buybacks available here Dyer's for Mongrels. So this is going to open up high ground. We do get. The hook into the blink. Damage Amp Rune on Claire as well, so no Dragon Form quite yet. But it's going to be back up in a second with plenty of time on the Damage Amp. So this is going to be a set of barracks here. And with the top tower already brought down, Claire going to start machine gunning into this top tower with the illusions. And putting there, going to have the opportunity to potentially threaten Megas here. Lost Six String is going to get left alone top and is going to get brought down. Buttery Greg and Claire, though, continuing to tee off in this tower. They're going to find the last of the tier threes. Moonstone gets dropped. Fight Andy looking to chase out. Claire already on the run. These cores, they're quick. 
with putting people to fully disengage. So they get one set of barracks and all of the tier 3 towers. They already had this one. All of the barracks exposed now. But Mongrels, they immediately want to smoke out. They have the advantage of Six String being dead. Want to see what they can find out on the map. Being tasty. Ooh. Eventually could have spotted Mr. Fishy there. I think spotted the rot on the creep wave. Radiant are scanning. Scan very well placed, does catch where this smoke play is. Too tasty continuing to hunt. A little bit of time left on the smoke. 32L, they are fully split up and away. Not giving Mongrels any opportunity to find a pickoff here. Great map reads, great discipline. And they're gonna go for their own smoke now. Yes. Aussie in the most precarious position at the moment. The circle. Pretty on point. They're going to see Big Tasty hitting the creep wave there. Ooh, Dossi. Dossi's going to show on the creep wave. Oh, this is trouble. The team's not here. They're all going to set up. Oh, it's disastrous. Dossi is going to get infested inside the Dragon Knight, but no chance to escape. Absolutely merciless from putting the R and R D two L, and this is ninety seconds. No buyback on the life stealer. A hundred ten gold short, and this is scary now. Mongrels, they were in such a strong position, but Claire goes in with the dragon tail. Nice save with the shard from Big Tasty. Spaceship trying to keep them at bay. Buyback, it became available for Dossi, and they use it. That's going to push putting back off. The barracks will be held. Dyer's top barracks are under attack. Radiant bottom down. The hold did still come at a cost. Dossi's buyback now. Forced out. Means the mongrels really have to play carefully. For the next six, seven minutes. Net worth lead just about gone. Minute 45 until the chance of next Roche spawn. Radiant are scanning. Now we're going to get another Tormentor here for RD2L. Thanks. Who goes the way of Snapfire. Have that extra oomph on the Fire Snap cookie. Are you sitting on a good amount of gold? Maybe thinking about an Agnum Scepter for more initiation. Maybe another defensive item. Maybe going to go into the Boots of Bearing. Got Halbert on the Techies as well. Refresher Orb on Razor. Double the BKB, double the Eye of the Storm. Wind Waker on Ursa. Oh... Oh, Buttery Greg is going for the You Can Never Kill Me Bowl. Octarine queued up next. This around when we were seeing the core Dark Willows going the permanent Shadow Realm build, there was also talks of this Ursa build. This was around TI. And I don't think the Ursa version of it got touched as this smoke... They are not all together here on Mongrels, and they're going to blink right in onto Spaceship. Big Tasty looking to split it up. Soulheim's there, and that's going to be a double dismember. It doesn't last long. Refresher Shard used. Another Soulbind onto the two of them, but Buttery Greg tearing apart Dossie, but now the Bash Wars are on between Dossie and Buttery Greg. Dossie now going to turn, but the Infest finishes off Mr. Fishay. Support Den on either side. Buttery Greg 
Oh, Jess manages to dodge out the Split Earth with the Earth Drop. Team Fight Andy four staff forward. Trying to find the chase and the duels. No, that's the Wind Waker. Be able to get away, but now the E Blade into the Dismember! They find the kill on Buttery Greg! Buybacks all available on the side of Pudding. So this is not free, but what can they claim here? They'd love to get a barracks, maybe more. Or will it just be a trade of buybacks? Dossie, right past the creep wave. And to finish off this bottom melee barracks. Pudding will let them have that much. There's two buybacks used, and the Fortify Claire jumps in. Lincoln Sphere is done, and the hook back. So a nice disengage immediately in response by Mongrels. So they get the two buybacks. Don't get Buttery Gregs. They're valuable now as... I mean, both cores on Mongrels, like a thousand gold off. So not actually at a buyback advantage here, even after getting those two out. As Aghanim Scepter being worked on by Grimstroke. This is going to be a good Dark Portrait game. You get an Ursa, you get a Razor. Oh, you get the Dragon Knights. Team Flight Andy, sitting in Weight of the Roche, going to have a minute to wait here. Circle drawn out on the map. I think that's by Big Tasty. I think just saying we're going to stick in this area until Roche is up. Smoke now. Going out before the Ursa has respawned. A little bit precarious. It's going to take a moment, but they have the outpost for Buttery Greg to TP into, and it Radiant looks like just scan. waiting here for that. 30 seconds until Aegis. Blink forward from Claire. Finds the Dragon Tail. The Dismember, though, in response, does have the Tombstone on death, so that's going to get dropped. Buttery Greg arrives from the outpost. Five back from Spaceship. Player trying to bring down the tombstone from the high ground. Team Fight Andy trying to put a stop to it. Mr. Fishay, the first to go down. Team Fight Andy sitting on top of Dragon Knight. The BKB's worn off. Another dismember is in. Big Tasty finishes off Claire. And now Dossie chasing forward. Infests inside of Ari. And the Snapfire are going to be brought down as well. So this is no buyback available for the Razor. As Mongrels sitting and waiting, ready for that smoke. Now, Roshan has respawned, but once again, they have the advantage. They know that Razor is gone. They know the buyback has been used. Ari will use their buyback. Radiant's middle barracks are under attack. Team Fight Andy starting to work on the middle barracks. With no Razor, there's the threat of Mega Creeps here. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. The middle barracks, they go down quick. Has fallen. Still tier 3. End around here. Buttery Craig. Seeing if they have the angle. Claire holding the buyback. They jump in onto the backs. The big Tasty in as well. Soulbind is out. They turn it around on six string. No buyback on the techies either. And now Ari gonna go down as well. Three dead. Claire commits the buyback. But now it's a 5v2. The barracks will fall in Mongrels. Big fight. It's a dismember. Getting controlled up now by Claire. Big Tasty falling a bit low, but the disarms are there. Wind Waker away, but now Claire, the one they turn on to. Dossie stuck onto the Dragon Knight, and GG's called. The Mongrels, they bring bad. They bring, oh my goodness, they bring down the big bad. Putting the R in RD2L. Take the game one victory. In a 53-minute, pretty bonkers back-and-forth game. I mean, oh, that is that is a swingy game there. That was a very, very fun game. Very nice team fight execution for Mongrels. I, I think they really found the answers they needed in the draft there. And overall, just executing that, like, it really came down to executing, executing the fights and putting the RD in RD2L. They had that huge fight on their own high ground, but Mongrels 
they they bounce back from it and they win more. Ooh. As far as MVP for that game, I, the 13-4-19 is the most appealing looking KDA line, and it was a very, very good uh, performance from Big Tasty on the Pudge. I think it's going to go there. Um, I see the R lobby is already up, so this will probably be a quick break. Uh, so stay tuned for game number two. It's going to be another good one. Radiant team ban. Oh, we are back. Apologies that I let you hear the uh, lobby Ten sounds. Seconds remain. Dire or congratulations, team you got to hear the lobby sound. As we're back for game number two between Ten putting the R and RD to L and the Mongrels. Yeah. Uh, Five seconds remaining. 
flip over to the standings again. As you can see, team Mongrels, with that Game 1 victory, handing RD2L just their second loss back. of the group stage. So a very big win for them here. Let's see if they can do it again. Back. That would give them just all sorts of confidence going into uh, the playoffs as this is the last week of our group Ten stage. Seconds remaining. I gotta remind myself too. Was Dyer it? Team ban. How rules that were, took Ten the other game? Remaining. Yes. So, uh, five seconds. Mongrels remaining. also won um, a game against putting. Uh, was there one other loss? So, if any team has the answers for putting the R and R D two L, it's the Mongols. Team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So similar bans to start things off. This time, a Nyx Assassin comes in as a ban for the Mongols. Radiant um, team instead Dyer of team forget what their other ban in the yes. early stage was, I believe it was the Mars. In fact, <laughs> um, so that's gonna get through. Dragon Knight taken out by putting the R and R D two L as they see that Mars available. I think in um, I think in Dream League, like Dragon Knight Ten Mars have been remaining. some of the most first picked heroes. Five so, seconds remaining. R D two L well on top of their. Uh, meta knowledge. Viper and Shadow Demon, the other bands from them. Yeah, this Nyx Assassin kind of suggests to me that Mongrels Radiant want to Team get Bank. a like high magic dealer. Maybe just want to go back to that Leshrac. It worked out quite well for them in game one. Akiro going to be the opening pick. I like this response to the Ten Mars because remaining. it's the kind of hero that makes it really Radiant hard for putting Dyer to team play back. around their own arena. As Lifestealer going to get taken out this time. Force Dossi onto a different hero after a great Lifestealer performance in game one. Axe as well, see if Mongrels answer that with a Dazzle ban like they did Ten in game seconds one. Seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Ooh, snap fire the other bands, so I'll let the dazzle through, and this should mean an undying pickup again for Mongrel. Maybe a Phoenix though. I believe it was also remaining. Um Ari on the Snapfire last game, Five and we have remaining. uh Hexclamation back in the pudding lineup for game two. I think, unless Ari was Adam, I always get confused when there's the uh, difference in names between their Steam profile and their pro profile. After the Snapfire ban, I'm surprised they're going this far into reserve time on this first pick, because I was positive that that was just going to be lock in the Undying for spaceship again. Maybe reconsidering it here. Radiant team pick. Yep, there it is. Probably just considering other things in the draft, deciding if they want to take it now or grab it a little later. Now, with the snapfire banned out by mongrels to protect the undying, 
putting have the opportunity to take the Phoenix Ten for themselves here, remaining. which is a really good combo with the Mars. Five seconds remaining. The Tombstone, though, like the Macropire, is a nice way to again make the Mars Arena hard to fight into, but yeah, there's the Phoenix. Mongrel's now going to need to find something to answer the Phoenix Egg the same way R and RD2L are going to be looking for something to answer the Undying Tombstone. Dark Willow is what RD2L will pick up. And that is a decent Tombstone hitter. She's got not a ton of built-in attack speed, but probably the best ranged attack animation in the game. Uh, she has, like, absolutely no front swing on that animation uh, to make Shadow Realm easier to execute. Five seconds remaining. And a really long range for Dire it. Team pick. Juggernaut. Juggernaut going to be picked up by Mongrels, so... You try to egg, this guy's Radiant just going to spin and click Legion on it. Commander. And then Legion Commander for their offlane. I'm surprised... I mean, Juggernaut is a good egg hitter. But with an Undying, I'm surprised both games they've gone with a melee carry... Ten seconds with remain. the Undying. Because Undying is like known remain. for being similar to a Trian Protector. It's like really, really strong front line in lane for a ranged carry to give you like a really free lane. I think Juggernaut Undying is a perfectly good lane. I just find it interesting that they, they've gone this route. And Legion Commander feels good with the Jakiro, because you can if you can manage to duel somebody in Macropire, or you know, if Jakiro holds the Macropire um for once the duel is used, a person's gonna die. Like a guaranteed duel victory for you. Radiant team back. Putting, they're going to go for the Troll Warlord. Also going to be a decent option for dealing with the Tombstone. Should fight pretty well into a Juggernaut. You've got the Pseudo Bash with the Berserker's Rage um, to lock down the Juggernaut even when he's spinning. Should fare pretty well in a duel, especially if he can get Whirling Axes off. Before the duel. Remaining. Five seconds Wyvern remaining. Band out by putting the R and RD2L. It would be an okay Winter Wyvern game. I do think Mongrels would like to have a more Dire backline core. Back. They're also not an incredibly durable team. Outworld Destroyer Band out again by Mongrels. As you have both teams... Almost certainly looking for a mid laner here. Ten seconds remaining. Less flexibility than the last draft. Five seconds remaining. Both perfectly solid drafts. Their mids have these guys played. I mean, Ember Spirit, team they back. want a dive option. I think something like an Ember. I think, again, like, Mongrel's taking out these kind of backline um, high damage mid laners. I feel like, again, R and RD2L want something for dive. And Ember Spirit is actually Ten seconds, terrifying when paired with a Phoenix. It's going to set up Five perfect arenas, too. Remain. I think Ember would be really, really good for RD2L. I guess we haven't seen Ember played by Pudding yet. 
they themselves have banned it a lot. Radiant team pick. Well, a lot. Four times. Leshrac can be banned out. Yeah, I think Mongrels could certainly go for the Leshrac here again. Again, there was that Nyx ban early that I feel like was to protect something like that. It's going to be a tiny for pudding, so not a spirit hero, but is a good initiator, a good source of AoE lockdown. I like this pickup here. Another hero that's not easy to kill in duel, not particularly easy anyway. Ten seconds. And Blade Mail will be a big help for that. Five seconds remaining. What do mongrels want here? Ooh, it's an Arc Warden. And that's a mid Arc Warden. Unless, yeah. Oh, it's big tasty on the Arc Warden. Interesting. So I imagine this is a lane swap. But it could just be an offlane arc and a mid legion. Maybe you like the Legion Commander's mid matchup with the Tiny. Because, yeah, for the RD2L side, they have nothing crazy for swaps there. Hats draft? These are some good hats. Nothing on the Phoenix. The like underwater arc warden set, not my favorite. There's not a ton of options for that guy. This Legion Commander set's very sick. Got the Arcana on the Jug, the Golden Sword. Oh, Marques is going to be the one playing the Undying and has a much cooler Undying set. Is getting completely blocked off by the Jug Arcana. <laughs> Overall, I mean, the Jakiro kind of matches up with the Phoenix. It's a really nice Mars set. Good Troll Warlord as well. I really saw somebody else with a similar Troll set in the game I was casting yesterday. With the, the like, RGB axes alongside... Maybe that just is the RGB set and it's only the axes that have the effect. Prepare for battle. Mongrels will start things off with the smoke again. Should make a decision on the hatch draft. Uh, it's gonna go... It's a close one. It's a very close one. I'm gonna go to Pudding, I think. They have some, like, more unique options. I feel like I don't see this Mars set a lot. As Mongrel's just gonna walk directly up into the high ground. Brambles are gonna serve to help. They grab the first level tombstone. Gonna slow them down. Blood Grenade as well. So Ari is gonna be the target here. Spin from Dossi onto the Dark Will, and that'll be the first blood. Last of my kind first. Just immediate aggression, no fear. And exclamation up at the top. But I imagine that just straight easy voice line is the level 30 for juggernaut dossy flexing there that is it <laughs> is a cruel voice line the battle three gregs spinning on the rune is this like i swear that somebody in the game i cast yesterday had this like exact set which i don't think is that Got a this is very important hats draft research. Um, how do I? How do I? Can I not? Yeah, I know. Need to know. Oh, okay. The shoulders are different, but the these do go with the RGB axes. This is all conspicuous. Okay. It's a good set. Don't get me wrong. I I thought there was more mixing and matching being done. Um, I think there's probably more RGB on the shoulders, but with the Immortal shoulders, it's, that gives it a nice, like, I like the back of the Immortal. It's a good, it's all a good combo, like, the blue goes together, the hair, good set. Okay, so it is a lane swap of players, 
uh, Big Tasty taking the Arc Ward in mid this time around, and Team Fight and Legion Commander in the off lane. Um, hero swap, but playing in the same position, so they should have been watching top. Both of these flying heroes are almost dead. We caught first blood, though. You cannot say that we didn't see first blood in this game. I might miss second, third, and fourth blood, but first blood was seen. Player throws the tree back over towards Big Tasty and some house back the other way. He makes another tree and eats it. Mr. Fish A out to the early lead in the last hits. Dossie actually having trouble getting things started here. Spaceship getting quite harassed. These fire spirits doing a lot of work. The Jakiro and the Phoenix are both very strong and annoying laners. No surprise to see the amount of harass. It's down hot everybody's low to accept this offering. By everybody, I mostly mean the mongrels. Our case being forced to walk back. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, tiny's super low. Everybody's low. I hate this. <laughs> I'm just clicking on every lane, worried that I'm about to miss something important. Heal up. Okay, this lane this lane's doing pretty good on health. I'm watching mid as Claire. Let's have the bottle and picked up the rune, so in pretty good shape as far as health goes now. Team fight Andy. Let get salved up now, so now everybody's sitting on pretty good health. But Andy is going to set up around the Lotus Pool. People already pushed off to it, and Dark Pool taking a good amount of damage. Does get a nice placement of the Brambles. Now the K comes in from Marques. Lotus is going to get nabbed by Teamfight Andy, who will clear out one more of those Brambles for good measure. We did see Arc Warden was super popular before the C patch, did get a pretty significant nerf. Um, spark Ray, the big thing being the Spark Ray is not uh, sticking around nearly as long as Top get here just in time for Dossie Skill on Mr. Fish And exclamation in trouble here too. Oh, nearly gonna burn out to the Liquid Fire, but has the wand charges to be able to survive. And bought Buttery Greg down at halves. Marquise as well. Bad we'll get the whole creeps from the lane. Gonna still run into the Dagger Wave. Oh, nice Water Rune Steal by H. Meaning to ask if they prefer their name said as H, H exclamation, or hexclamation. In Twitch chat, it reads as hexclamation. He's down bot. Buttery Greg finds the kill on Marquise. They killed off the tombstone as well. With heroes from pudding. Find themselves pretty low, but good amount of damage going to team fight Andy means not going to be able to push forward to. Try to finish anybody off. Denied. <laughs> they got 10 uses of Preserver's Rage. I don't know if that means they swapped the mode 10 times or <laughs> just hit with 10 attacks. It's probably swapped 10 times. Looking to cast the pole is going to get hit by the decay. But the brambles stop Team Fire and Andy from being able to push on forward. Op spaceship burning down to these fire spirits! Exclamation! Quite a bit of a nuisance. It's gonna try to land one of these on Dossie as well. Does manage to snipe it. We're gonna have Lotus is coming up. It's like Pudding is gonna be able to control it up here in the top lane. We pushed in on down on the bot lane, so Mongrel should be able to grab this one. We can test here in the ice path. 
Stun up Mr. Fish A under... Oh, under the spin. And the God's Rebuke will at least prevent Dossie from getting the kill. Spaceship Force to finish that one off. Invis Ruin for Tiny means we're going to get a rotation down here, and Ari manages to grab the Lotus out of the pool. Bot lane. Ooh, but a nice read here. Definitely gets pinged out as Marquez and Teamfight Andy fully back behind the tower and force Claire to be back to mid lane. I do like that Claire did not waste any time sitting in the bottom lane after they realized that the gank is not going to work out. She's right back in the lane and not give, uh, not give Big Tasty any extra space here. The lanes have been very even so far. We are going to get the level 6 here from Big Tasty, so we're going to get both of the Arc Wardens dishing out the damage onto Claire. Another Spark Wraith comes out. Looks like Tiny able to sidestep that one. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Wisdom Runes go uncontested. Root out on Teamfight Andy. Already getting the damage in. Solrith is there. I like this. Ooh, two levels early in Solrith from Marquise. Not the usual build, but gives you a good amount of sustain for your land. Might be something I have to try. It's particularly helpful in this kind of lane where there's a good amount of harass coming out as a double melee into a double range. Yeah, net worth lead, or net worth last hits. The other, the other chart that we look at over here. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ari. Uh, very close across the board. Mids quite even as Spaceship is going to steal damage Amp Rune. There gets the Avalanche Toss. Ooh, just misses on the Ice Path. Player stepping away. It's just a clean steal for Spaceship! Exclamation. In the area, we're going to TP away now. No ice path available for a bit. As Big Tasty makes their way down towards the bot lane, that's where Exclamation is. Help defend. Gets the Icarus dive in for the slows. Get our own attack points out as well. Now here's Spaceship. Big damage coming out, and Big Tasty finishes it off. Another Spark Wraith and the Decay. This potentially going to be a triple kill. Good Whirling Axes to slow them down, get them the space, but taking out to the Liquid Fire, and Big Tasty finishes it off. Radiance top with, top must have been another attack. Spark Wraith that I just didn't see, huh? Yeah. That's a triple kill in the bot lane. I mean, that's a hell of a rotation. Bring four heroes. Kill three. Well worth it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Death tax. Are Greg and Ari making their way back down to the bot lane? We're gonna get the first round out on Teamfight Andy, but has the dispel ready with the press the attack. So it's gonna be hard to land the cursed crown in this game. Middle tower mid lane. <laughs> Big Tasty finds the solo kill on the mid opponent. Now down bot. Good fight Andy looking for the first duel. Mana getting spent out. Mr. Fishay makes the big rotation in towards bot with the arena. They're going to find the kill on Marquise as well, so this time, Pudding is the one completely punishing the engagement on the bottom tower. The voice lines continue getting spicier. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Already starting to feel the uh, the glimmers of playoffs excitement. As Brambles and Sunray just burns down Spaceship. He's hanging out the area. There's no exclamation is sitting a little low and no supernova yet, but let's dive away a week time. Dossi can get right up in the mix with Mr. Fisher. Pretty low on mana on the Mars. Just gonna 
push the Mars away from the lane, pick up some farm of their own, or case and get tasty. Move for something on Claire. Avalanche does slow down their plans here. Flux damage. Burning down on Claire, but pay for now and regen back up. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Very Greg working on that battle fury. Blade mail the first item for Team Fight Andy. Player has one thing for the power threads, so looking to go for the blink dagger first. There's the avalanche out. The heroes heals up from exclamation. There's so much damage already. And Big Tasty cleans up players. Both supports join in the mid lane. We find more. The Brambles are threatening to bring Marques down. Fire Spirit comes out, trying to push them away. Goodness. Meanwhile, the Spark Rates exclamation! This cast range is absurd. I mean, I know that's how the ability is meant Radiance to work, but like, not even on the, like, from the other side of the tower, not even threatened by the tower. Gross. They are going to look to get some revenge here on Marquise, has the soul rip to survive for a bit. You get the ice path in our spawns. That's ice wall, isn't it? I've been calling it ice path. I don't know that it is ice path. Top tower is under attack. Now they're gonna look, set up the arena, the toss onto Mr. Fisher, the spear into the wall, and the tree toss to finish it off. So, player finds the revenge kill on Big Tasty. Spaceship, seeing these heroes still sitting pretty low, does want to find something as Marquise rotates in. As something happened somewhere else, the Dossi would be all chat in. I don't know what that was. Let's take a look at net worth. Should have switched over to that. Great start here for Dossie as Claire jumps forward, but heals are there from her case. And use the tombstone, big tasty jumping forward as well, and a beautiful connection from the spaceship with the ice path and macro pyre dropped on a hexclamation still no supernova available and one last attack combined with the lingering damage of the macro pyre finishes off hexclamation 5k net worth lead here for mongrels is <laughs> excellent excellent teamwork on the voice lines there <laughs> the epi that may have, may have been a mistake to the juggernaut learn from your mistakes <laughs> So, well on the way to the Battle Fury here, Dossi has the Maelstrom, and is that already the Hyperstone for the Mjolnir? Oh, Dossi is having a hell of a start to this game. Has been pretty uncontested since the landing stage. 2-0-1 on the Jug. Roots and an Orb of Corrosion from our base. Continuing to surprise me with this position for Undying build. And has the Holy Locket queued up. This is... This is a spicy build, but I, I do not dislike it. Bishop can nab that Wisdom Rune. Working on the core staff, team fight Andy. Has Blade Mail finished, that's helping with this farm. Spaceship can assist as well. We look to stack up this ancient camp further. Not quite gonna find it, but that's okay. And working on that blink dagger, which will really get these duels going. No dual victories yet found by Team Fight Andy. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Blink dagger ready on the Mars. Looking at a Yule Scepter to set up some easy spear pickoffs. Not quite on the mark. Link as well for Mr. Fiche. The arena's on point, and Big Tasty just gets brought down in the arena. 
Spear away to prevent the duel from Teamfight Andy. Supernova gonna get used. Oh, and the Avalanche just set it up. There's the AoE control, the Spear as well. The Supernova lands. It's on to four. Dossi is gonna get in though with the Omni Slash. They look for the duel on Hexclamation. They're gonna find it. They bring down Mr. Fishery as well. Claire tosses up Dossi, but has the spin still available. And they turn the fight around. I can't believe they only lose Big Tasty there at the start. With an absolutely beautiful Supernova setup. But they just didn't have the damage to follow it up from there. And Mongrels, they, they execute that fight very well. Everybody kind of splitting onto their own targets, killing exactly who they need to to recover from the supernova land landing. So 8k net worth lead now, 14 to 7 for Mongrels. If they can find a 2-0 here, that is a hell of a lot of momentum to take into the playoffs. Heal up and smoke out for putting the RNRD 2L. They want to find some pickoffs, get the momentum swinging back in their favor. If they're going to find anybody here, it's going to be Big Tasty again. There's a ping. Someone. Oh, they're just too late. And now. Now there's going to be a smoke. Yeah, they they correctly found where Big Tasty was farming, but Big Tasty has slipped out of their grasp. But they will feel better about this missed smoke when they watch this VOD back and see that uh, the exact same time Mongrels were also going for a smoke on the opposite side of the map and were whiffing just as much. top tower has fallen. I always find it so interesting when we see these symmetrical moves being made by the teams. Like, Radiance bottom there must be something about like, this particular timing. Maybe it's cores hitting similar timings Radiant on either side. Maybe it's just this point in the game where like you're trying to use the cover of night before the enemy carry gets to a particular timing. But wow, Dossi's farm. Ilnir Yasha. Almost 200 already. Oh, the teamfight Andy looking for an early duel. The tombstone's down. Ace Pass gonna protect them. Burning down with a blade mail to help force Exclamation to stop the Sunray. Just clearing out all of these brambles for the team. That's what teamfight Andy does. Make sure... Ooh, nice blink away to not get slowed up by the whirling axes. Player sitting up on the high ground looking for a spot to get into this fight. They have the vision up there. Fully aware of this. Now the Supernova in the arena, but Mr. Fishy can die in the owner, their own arena, and the spin brings down the Supernova, but Buttery Greg gonna find the kill on Dossie. That's a huge one. Team Finani gonna go down as well, but as soon as the battle transcends, Buttery Greg falls, and they're gonna clean up Claire as well. So it's a full team wipe. They do get two massively valuable kills for putting the R and RE2L. But Mongrels, the team fight goes their way in the end. You get about 1,200 more gold from there. Just about every spell that every hero has used. Radiance for uh, Omni Slash, didn't get that one off. Maybe it was still just barely on cooldown. Eleven K net worth lead for Mongrels continues to build. And this would be, I believe it would secure them the number two seed in the division. I haven't seen how the other series, there's another series going on right now between Yuki and Hakuna Murana. They could both still finish even because I believe they're coming in at both five and five. Depending on how that series went and or goes. Uh be a big one for Mongols if they can get the 2-0. Now they're going to get another arena spaceship just going to get torn apart. Both supports quickly going to go down. 
Like, say quickly gonna go down. Marques still somehow surviving in the bubbles there. The Soul Rip, this Undying, is not gonna die. And now the control is there. The Gleipnir on to three. Claire burning down. Hexclamation trying to survive. Doesn't have a supernova quite yet. And Dawson's gonna be there to finish it off. Oh, meanwhile, though, Buttery Greg finds a solo kill on Teamfight Andy. Hello? Okay, well, that makes that fight still feel good. I cannot believe Marques survived there. It's the power of this Holy Locket. The self soul rip doesn't even have Greaves yet. It has, like, the huge heals. <laughs> Every six seconds. 250 health. And that was without a lot of units around. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Mongrel's now been set up around their tormentor. Go down pretty quickly, and it's gonna be the shard for each hero. Gonna get that liquid frost. Uh, up their tower push a bit, also get some good max health damage. Be Dyer's pretty useful for some of these tanky attack. heroes. This oh, is Claire tries to find the jump on Teamfight Andy. But just able to sneak away. Fish A looking for the arena. They actually Dyer's throw a Bedlam on preemptively, but doesn't have time for playing target now. Gonna get rooted up. Gonna have this arena spear away. Heals from Hexclamation. Another Glaive here from the other clone. And Gossie just gonna spin in with the flux hitting Mr. Fish A. Oh, has the Yules to survive right in the moment of a big taste we finish off the kill. Supernova aggressively, but just immediately gonna get chopped down. Buttery Greg, though, in on the back, has already found Teamfight Andy, and gonna find Big Tasty. Oh, Battle Trance already used, though, and it's gonna go down, and now the Omni Slash jumps over to Claire, and once again, putting the R in rd 2 l they find valuable kills, but it's not enough. As the one remaining core, always there for Mongrels. Put them ahead in these fights. Radiance middle tower has fallen. But team fight they convert into the tier two tower. Get some vision control up here. And back to keep farming. It's still just 24 minutes into the game, even with a 13k net worth lead. Mongrels, this is a pretty farm heavy lineup. Not something that I talked about in the draft. But Arc Ward and Jug, they're always going to be happy backing up to hit creeps. Which is going to give. I mean, it's a kind of double edged sword because it's going to give putting the R on RD2L more space out on the map throughout this game. So they're going to be able to get quite a bit of farm as well and stretch this game out. But I don't think they are going to be able to outcarry Jug Arc Legion Commander. Now waiting for Roche to make it home for the 25 minute mark. Mongrels into the pit. Skin is going to see this, but no chance to contest really. We have a couple heroes hanging out together down the bot, looking to just get the mid tower. Gossie gonna make an aggressive teleport here. The tower does go down. Mongrels, do they look to chase right away with this Aegis? Looks like they will. They smoke up. Dossie gonna keep hitting the creep wave. Now gonna reconnect for the smoke. 
and Big Tasty joining in as well. Radiance top tower. Ingo puts a travel on this Arc Warden. Not quite as mobile as many Dyer's often are. Teamfight Andy. Ooh. Fallen. New Claire was farming down here, but nice job reading the smoke, TPing away. Baron exclamation, they get out. Smoke, once again, not gonna find much as putting. They just group up, grab their tormentor. Mongrels are gonna go. Ah, that's where they are. Disperser, the next item in the plan for the Juggernaut, as the Agnum Scepter on its way. Oh my goodness. Yeah, off of the road. Dossie's farm continuing to outscale everybody else. Feels like you're just a full item ahead of anybody else in the game. Battle Fury, Shadow Blade, S and Y on Buttery Greg. I'm gonna build that into the full silver edge. Get the breaks for Moment of Courage. Kind of the only passive in the game. I guess Bat Blade Dance as well. It's not nothing to break. Feels a little weird to get the silver edge so early. I mean, it's also just nice for damage. Mongrels with the Aegis. Going right up into the high ground here, gonna force and keep these back. Mr. Fish Egg gonna connect here and big damage with the Avalanche into the Sunray. Nice heals up and Mr. Fish Egg not gonna catch much. In fact, only gonna catch Dossie, who uses the Omni Slash. They do have the tools to survive for now. Now the duel on Buttery Greg. No, it finishes off Mr. Fish Egg. Buttery Greg gets the kill on Team Fight Andy. Aegis is gonna get used. The Supernova connects on the three. Buttery Greg stunned up in the middle of that. Macropire as well. Ages. Ags has been finished with the hero now, getting controlled up. Ooh, dangerous spot for Dawson with big silver up again from Marquise Claire. The swift slash is there. They finish off the tiny. Dossi is gonna get speared into the tree with the shard. Spears the Jakiro as well. Dossi trying to heal up to finish off the healing ward. Now they turn back around under Mr. Fishery. That's the buyback on the Mars. Big Tasty now in on the supports with the Flux. Are you going to go down? Radiance Middle Tower. Now just like that, three heroes dead, two of them cores. Everybody back up on the side of Mongrels. It's just going to be the tower push immediately. It's going to get the Fortify. Fortify is actually going to kill off this double. Now the spin in. Oh, and the duel! They find it on Buttery Greg! Oh, this is massive if they can find it. No battle trans available. The troll warlord goes down. Does have buyback available. Just 30 minutes in all, oh, and the swift slash exclamation steps too far forward. And Mongrels now. They're fully into the base. Claire, though, jumps in, finds two with the Avatos. Big Tasty, though, jumps forward with the illusion. Has the blink. Chemist double in the middle of all of it. Dossie back up to Foldo, exclamation, bought back, Buttery Greg as well. Now it looks like Juggernaut forced back away. Buttery Greg right in on them and immediately the bash is there. But the Omni Slash, the Swift Slash gets off onto Claire. Trying to chase down the Tiny, spins them down. Cursed Crown, ooh, does manage to connect. And then into the Fear, and they actually do finish off Dossie and it goes the way of Buttery Greg. It's a massive amount of gold back for them. And at the end of the day, they didn't get any barracks. So it is just going to be a chunk into their lead. I mean, it cost how many? Three, three buybacks? Three buybacks. It's not nothing. <laughs> that, that fight finishes looking like it went putting the R and R D 2 L's way, but three more heroes had died there. So it was a pretty even fight at the end of the day. But they hold. They keep their barracks. The melee or axe going to regen. They get a crucial kill on Dossie. Only the second time the Juggernaut has died in this game. With 
Aegis spent back to farm for the Mongols. Maintain that lead, rebuild it a little bit. Getting these heroes. This game does get stretched out. Mongrels are still going to be feeling pretty confident. It'd be hard for putting put together the fights they need to battle back against these three scary heroes. Claire, though, here's the start of it. Avalanche into the toss. Team fight Andy. Oh, right into the brambles. Has the dispel though, but Buttery Greg showing up has the slow. Into the other rolling axes on the melee and roots them up and brings down Team Fight Andy. Coughs like that. What they need to stay in this one. We're already 2 0. Ooh, Claire looking for more spaceship. Well dodged from the Yules also on Mr. Fishay. Let's get the tombstone out of Marques in defense. But that will discourage putting from facing any further up into this high ground. High ground. Tier 2 tower. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. They're gonna smoke. They're just missing Big Tasty here, but if they go for the Angel Camp, blink away. They are gonna set up on Marquise here. The Macropire, the heals again, Marquise surviving. And now the Omni Slash. Claire found all alone. The Tiny gets brought down. Exclamation tries to swoop in. But now the spin up into the Supernova, but no chance this egg lands. Arena's there, the spear. Actually, I spoke too soon. It's the sun lands. Dossie getting controlled up and now out of the stun. Rules to try to survive for Mr. Feche, but Big Tasty still there with a the Tempest double. Dossie slowed up. The Bramble's going to prevent their chase. Exclamation able to TP away. And somehow, amidst all the chaos of the Supernova and what the Juggernaut was doing, uh, Big Tasty killed Buttery Greg. That all started with an amazing blink, like, just insane reaction time from Big Tasty to blink out of that. And then my attention got drawn elsewhere, but that's huge. Buttery Greg was one of the buybacks in the last fight. This is 75 seconds, no Troll Warlord. This could just be the game. Middle Barracks will be taken. It's going to be a few seconds until the other cores are back up. So they will have the chance to hold. The Tombstone going to get dropped. Fortify goes out right after the Tier 3 Tower falls. As that ends, the Barracks will be being worked on as Big Tasty with the Tempest Double. Now going to get blown up by Claire, but keeping them at bay. It's another set of Barracks. Still 45 seconds, Mill Troll Warlord. How do you hold without Buttery Greg here? Is a tall order. Mongrels. Led by Dossie. Gonna go for the Mega Creeps here. Spins. Just get the attacks flowing. Ice pass out. Not quite gonna connect. Looking for the blink, but it was cancelled on Claire, so no way to get in there with the Pedlum. In case you're now gonna jump in. The silence, the root on two. Playing this Tempest double like it's an anti mage Ags. Summon it, blink it in. Who cares if it dies? It's just a little bit of gold, and you're farming far faster than the enemy team. Mega Creeps trying to find it. Mr. Fiche trying to stop it. The team fight Andy's there with the duel. Dossie escapes. No, Dossie dies. Excuse me, Claire finishes it off. Supernova connects onto three outside the arena. They finish off the Mega Creeps, but what can they get? Buttery Greg's back up. Trying to finish off Marquise. High five off, and his team fight Andy goes down. Claire jumps in, finds Spaceship. So it's four heroes traded for the Mega Creeps. Mongrels seem pleased with that. Is that's 35 minute megas. So they continue, they trade a lot for it, but they continue to hold a pretty dominant lead here. Learn from your mistakes. So the Conda finished on the Tiny. 
A huge blow up potential with the avalanche toss, the tree toss as well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. EKB being worked on by Mr. Fisher. My goodness, spaceships farm in this game. I mean, I know Jakiros are known for being pretty good at finding farm. It's actually ahead of both of the offerings. That has been Ewell's Ag's four staff. They have Ag Shard for Marques. Did that save on the Tombstone? Saw the orchid at the tail end of the high ground battle on Big Tasty. Dyer's Coming into play, Disperser finished on the Juggernaut. Get the butterfly next to really be able to survive. Can fight Andy. Scouting out Claire here is gonna go for the duel. Claire blinks away, finds spaceship, gets the toss up, doesn't quite finish off the Jakiro, just barely managed to get away, and the duel is gonna cancel the TP. Macropire laid down. Marquise drops the tombstone on top as well. Duel finished off, Claire dead. 80 seconds, but has buyback. Mongrels, you know they're going to force Claire to use it here. They start their march up the high ground once more. Bertrand has been available. They do not choose to pick it up. Chip away at these outer buildings. Smoke within the base on two. With practice comes the Tempest Double threatening out towards the fountain. Dossie and the Mega Creeps crashing in. Here's Claire with the buyback. Smoke as well. Hexclamation looking to start things off. Fire Spirits throwing up. Spaceship gets jumped on by Claire and does get brought down. Now the arena onto Dossie. That's the pick they need. Hexclamation is there with the Sunray, but Dossie escapes into the Swift Slash. Fully healed back up. Duel 1. For buttery Greg, and now Dossie controlled up speared and brought down. Mongrels have they gone too far? Ari forced to buy back. But two big cores found, and one tower goes down in the meantime. It was all just space for the mega creeps to start hitting these buildings. Um meanwhile. Big Tasty and Marquise. They kill Claire, who chases them out on their own. Oh. Oh. Watery Greg's like, come on. I, just, I couldn't just get that free 200 gold. I mean, those deaths are... Like, that's a big swing for the side of RD2L. Like, whoa, look at that XP. Look at that net worth bump. It does kind of settle back down with the buybacks and Claire falling. But like, Buttery Greg is now ahead of Dossie. Dossie's farm had been bonkers this whole game. Buttery Greg's now at the top of the net worth. EKB ags. Dispels on the Whirling Axes as Spaceship get found with Silver Red, Watery Greg. And we do have the Yules to escape for now and sets up Ice Path. We stole a neutral item. Okay, Roche roars and just is dead. <laughs> caught up looking at items. And they put that on Big Tasty. So recognizing that the Arc Warden has kind of moved into the top spot here for Mongrels. I mean, it's very even between these top three cores. The Bloodthorn finished, Manta as well. Means there's going to be a lot of Arc Wardens. Maybe just looking to threaten straight for the Ancient with more Arc Wardens than they can handle. If you use Manta on the Tempest Double and the main hero, it's going to be quite a bit to deal with the smoke. Oh, just missing Dossie. Or no, that's not a smoke, that's just the Silver Edge. 
Come this double. We'll walk right in. Just gonna get controlled up and brought down. Just a hell of a lot of damage to Buttery Greg in the process, though. <laughs> I could not see the health bar. It was under the illusions, and I walked away with less health than I was expecting. The Basher finished on the Jug can give them a lot more control. Goes that before the Butterfly. At least seeing... Only for the Hag's Blessing. Stays. Who's getting speared up here? It's just the Tempest Double. It's getting a good amount of damage on this Tier 4 tower. Nearly brings it down. This is going to be a threat of Rat. Pudding are going to have to really be careful how they play whatever fight Mongrels look to initiate. If Mongrels even try to initiate, maybe they're just going to keep sending in Tempest Doubles. Basic skills of Wisdom are in there, and the last skills of Comment as well. It'll be a shard for Teamfight Andy. That big bonus damage on the duel. Well's extra range, overwhelming odds. I'm just double in with the Manta. Violence up on the Mars, that's the tier 4 tower down. Claire does go in the back and Dossie jumps in. Those Manta illusions hitting as well. He's trying to bring this down this tower with all the illusions, but Mr. Fishay on the back, but the Supernova off on the side, this arena doesn't really catch anything. The Macropire just forcing them away, Mr. Fishay back away. The Supernova does land onto Spaceship, and now Teamfight Andy in with the BKB. Ancient already at half health, and here comes the real Big Tasty. They're just going to try to click in the duel to hold them off from defending their Ancient Buttery Greg, getting pulled between all of these targets. Fortify is there. Dossie getting brought low. Buttery Greg healing up. Teamfight Andy getting brought low, but now Buttery Greg's going to be the one that goes down. No buybacks available. The Ancient getting focused up. Dossie going to finish off Mr. Fisher gets the Rampage, and takes the GG. Mongrels win the game, win the game, win the series 2-0 against putting the R in RD2L. That is a massive swing of momentum as the group stage finishes for the Mongrels, taking this 2-0 over the number one seed in the division. That is a massive one for them. So they improved to 7-5. and five. They knock rnrd 2 l down to 9-3. and three. They will maintain the number one spot. Let's check in on... Yuki versus Hakuna Murata was a 1-1 split. So that 2-0 secures the Mongrels the number two seed. Yuki take the number three seed. How much does that matter? I'm not sure yet because of, uh, however, the, uh, the brackets end up being set up. Uh, but wow, that is a massive win for Mongrels. It, again, even though it doesn't dethrone rnrd 2 l uh, from the number one seed, that is so much confidence you take with you into the playoffs. Um, that That's an amazing series by Mongrels. And this game, like, game one had its swings. This one, this one was Mongrels the whole way. They built their lead, and they executed this draft very well. It it was impressive. Like, this reads like a greedy lineup when they pick this mid-arc warden with the Juggernaut. But they were taking fights early. They, like, Big Tasty played an absolutely amazing arc warden game. I'm going to give the MVP there, for sure. Damn, this is after arc warden got some nerfs. This is coming off of a patch where arc warden was stronger than he is now. And had been being played in the carry role taking this in the mid lane and again just executing this game so so well really impressive stuff for Monk. um i'd love to talk about this series even more uh but it is late and i was tired before we even started as you can probably tell by all of my fumbling uh so i'm gonna go to bed thank you everybody for joining us congrats to the mongrels uh looking forward to how these teams do in the playoffs it's definitely going to be a good time keep an eye out for that still uh other group stage matches to be played 
in the other divisions. Um, so do check those out. Um, I believe I believe there's two games left to be played. There's one on Wednesday, and there's one that hasn't been scheduled yet. Uh, I think it sounds like that one's going to be like next week. Um, and then from there, it's going to be the reveal of the playoff bracket, which I am immensely excited for. It's going to be a very good time. All right, have a great rest of your week. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, great job by both of these teams, both of them. Walking away with a positive win rate in the group stage. Uh, good amount of confidence to take with them into playoffs. So definitely going to be fun to watch both of these guys uh, as we get into the brackets. All right, have a great one, everybody. We will see you around.